Good afternoon. I am Sumi, currently participating in the Educational Leadership Program in Perkins School for the Blind. So today we are going to explore about the crucial role of families in visual impairment and multiple disabilities in inclusion. So the session abstract will be focusing on the parents of children uh, with visual impairment and multiple disabilities in the age group of 2.5 to yeah, seven years. So parents play a crucial role in creating a supportive home environment that addresses accessibility, learning and accommodation needs for the successful implementation of a personalized program for children with visual impairment and multiple disabilities. The ACCESS recipe is an acronym developed by me representing the golden guidelines for parents to effectively facilitate inclusive learning for their children with visual impairment and multiple disabilities, ensuring they reach their maximum potential. Derived from conversations with numerous families who have successfully raised children with such challenges, this set of guidelines encompass a parental approach aimed at maximizing each child's potential. So moving to the next slide, these are the session objectives, introduction, importance of family involvement, understanding the brain development. We will be learning a little bit about access recipe, the resources, and summary. So we are going to the next slide. Before we dive into the session, let me tell you a brief about myself. I am Sini. I am a special educator heading the Department of Special Education Needs in an inclusive school in Kerala, India. And my doctoral research focuses on inclusive education, where I developed an educational app, India's first app on inclusive education, empowering general educators to prepare for inclusive education. I'm also founder of a community support group called Pinch of Love that again promote inclusivity among schools and community. Moving to the next slide. In this session, throughout the session, I'll be addressing parent. So this definition, I have taken it from the, the new IEP format, Massachusetts Department of Elementary and Secondary Education. So the parent shall mean father, mother, legal guardian, person acting as a parent of the child. It can be a foster parent or educational surrogate, parent appointed accordance with the federal law. So we'll be moving to the next slide. We'll do a very quick feelings check-in. So you can see a feeling emotion check-in chart. The number one will be representing the sun that is happy. Number two, it is a little bit of nervous. Maybe I am in that position right now. You can see symbol as like cloudy with little sunshine and three is nervous. And you can see a lot of, it's moody with a lot of clouds. And four, sad, it's rainy. And five, really mad or angry. So if it, you are in one, can I see a clock? Can I get it? Good. <laughs> Anybody in number two? Good. So same pinch with me. Number three. Good. Four. Or five. Oh, nobody's mad or angry at me. <laughs> okay, good job. <laughs> so moving to the next slide. This is a video. It's an actually an advertisement. Um, all the characters are fictitious, it's cartoon characters, but we will see it's something related to our topic. Are you all ready? Set? Go! Okay. Sorry. I'm doing it. Sorry. Okay. 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 All right, okay, now. Oh, that was the process. Okay. 
or at some technical glitches. So, okay, I'll move to the next one. Anybody seen this advertisement? In the chat, anybody seen? In the chat, anybody seen this video? Okay, all right, all right, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, ah, all right, okay. No, no, I'm just asking, like, anybody seen this video before? This is a, um, it's a Christmas ad where the hedgehog will be trying to go to school and the kind of challenges the hedgehog will be facing and you can see a lot of challenges. The thorns like representing, I have taken it as the hedgehog challenges. Like it can be in the form of social, communication, language, behavioral, sensory, and multiple difficulties. And the hedgehog is actually really, really wanted to be and mingle with the peers and then the challenges. That's what the entire video is all about. And English education, its major one barrier is attitude. So moving to the next slide. What comes to your mind when you think about the word inclusion? Anybody comes to volunteer? Yes. No one left behind. No one left Very behind. beautifully, you have summarized, Lily. Accessibility. Excellent. Yes. Yeah. Thank you so much. So inclusion is the practice of teaching children with disabilities in the same classrooms with children their own age who do not have disabilities. So you might have heard about the word like a mainstreaming. So mainstreaming both are like interchangeable. It's like we will be sending the ch child will be participating in selected time or couple of activities. But inclusion, the full participation with full accessibility. So moving to the next slide. According to National Center on Early Childhood Development, Teaching and Learning, they have emphasized the framework for effective practice in six elements. They have used house as a framework and in the center that is engaging parents and families. In the foundation slide, you can see in the foundation, we can see nurturing, responsive, effective, and interactive and engaging environment. That's the importance they will be discussing. In the first pillar, They'll be talking about the research-based curriculum, that is evidence-based high-quality practices. And the second slide, second uh, pillar, it will be screening and ongoing assessments. The roof will be talking about the highly individualized teaching and learning. And the center, again, that is engaging parents and families. And the side walls are equity-based practices. So you can imagine the importance of family. The same rights for all children. Do we all agree? Yes. They have the full right to high quality programs, right to legal protections under the law, right to be part of the community, right to be respected for themselves. Under the public law 94142, parents are guaranteed the right to be a full and equal participants in, the, in their child educational program. So we'll be talking about the responsive parenting in, in our future slides. If you see the principles of uh, special education law, we will see the parent and student participation. It is the importance of involving parents into the special education process. They have the right to be participate in meeting, evaluation, eligibility determination, development of IEP, and to determine the child's eligibility, they have to undergo the appropriate evaluation all the student, all the children in the United States will be entitled for an individualized education plan or individualized family service plan. All of all the children are entitled for free and appropriate public education that is FAPE. And schools sh should en ensure all the opportunities should be given in a least restrictive environment. And a set of procedural safeguards to protect their right to be participate in the decision making process of their child education program. The moment a child with disability born in a family, the parents will be in a shock because no parent will be expecting. So they will be undergoing a different 
stages, that is uh, the grief stages, usually they'll be undergoing maybe initial, it will be like denial and then depression, sadness, anger, bargaining. The last step will be the acceptance. I hope that every parent should be reaching to the final stage, that is acceptance, as soon as possible, so that we can start the intervention at the earliest, because they are going to lose the golden period of time. So we'll be talking more about the early intervention in the coming slides. So the moment we will be embracing the acceptance stage, your journey starts. That is so powerful, so impactful, and purposeful. No matter what the disabilities are, doesn't make any difference because you are their parents. So let me allow a brief about a brain development. In the first initial stages, millions of neural connections are forming. And our brain is like a sponge where everything is like whatever happening around the child is soaking around. So that time, the intervention, that will be the maximum potential. But unfortunately, many a time, we'll be starting the intervention at, uh, at the age of like three or four. So the window, that's the golden period of window, that is actually sometimes we'll be losing it. Anybody heard of this toxic stress? Yes, okay. So uh, according to Radley and Bok in 2005, Center on the Developing Child, Harvard University, stress, it is a strong, unrelieved activation of the body's stress management system. Stress, toxic stress is, is the strong, unrelieved activation of the body's stress management system. It can be due to various factors, extreme poverty, and then maternal stress, under stimulating environment, for example, orphanages. So if you can see the picture, when the child will be receiving a responsive, encouraging, engaging, yeah, the environment, the stimulating environment, you can see unlimited neural connections happening in the first neuron. But when it comes to the child undergoing the toxic stress, the neural connections are underdeveloped. And that is the key for the unlimited neural neurons. That's the key for the learning and the success in the future. And you know, the prefrontal cortex, that is the CEO of our brain, the chief executive officer is responsible for our emotional regulation, critical thinking, logical reasoning. So that is the importance of stimulating environment. Dr. Nadine Gab. She is a pioneer in the developmental cognitive neuroscience. She was talking about a lot in proactive model in education. We might have heard about that proactive model in uh, proactive uh, medicine because uh, she was telling about um, it's like a not waiting till the time you will be developing some diseases. We will be having a frequent cholesterol checkup like mammogram so that we will we'll get to know any elevators, any parameters are high then immediately we will be doing some exercise, lifestyle changes, everything we'll be doing accordingly. The same way she's urging us, all the parents, to start the early intervention at the earliest without waiting for any diagnosis and assessment. So, can we try a recipe? Yes, okay. So the ACCESS recipe is an acronym Develop My Me, representing the golden guidelines for parents for effectively facilitate inclusive learning for their children with visual impairments and multiple disabilities. Derived from numerous conversations with the families who have successfully raised children with such challenges, this set of guidelines will be giving a guideline for each child's fullest potential. The name recipe implies flexibility, suggesting that as in cooking, Modifications can be incorporated based on individual's family preferences. There are no rigid rules or frameworks to adhere to. For instance, it operates on an individual basis, much like adjusting ingredients in a recipe, adding or limiting certain elements as needed. This flexibility empowers parents to tailor their approach according to their child's unique needs and circumstances. So let's see. 
So acceptance, that's the first and foremost, assessments, communication, collaboration, education, stimulating home environment, self-care, recipe, or resources. Acceptance, assessment, communication, collaboration, stimulating home environment, self-care, and finally, the resources. Acceptance. Uh, I think we have already talked about, about the acceptance. The moment you start accepting everything, that's everything, the change starts. Acceptance and connection, they are the lifelines. Once the child will be understanding about, okay, the love languages of the parents and the same, then the changes will be starting. So I have included in the handout, uh, there is a five uh, love languages. It's like a physical contact, uh, words of affirmation, and then small act of a gift, yes, physical touch. So these are the major love languages you can use. So connection moves a child from reactivity to receptivity. And make sure that all correction happens before that you should be having a connection. Moving to the next slide, we'll be talking about assessment. Assessment will be giving you a lot of knowledge that will empower you. It will be, these are the major parameters in the assessment process, will be giving the diagnosis it can be, and the learning style, what the learning media child better access the information, individualized education plan, individualized family service plan, what are the modifications and adaptations. So when it comes to assess, uh, diagnosis, as a parent, I should be knowing that what condition, cerebral, cerebral cortical visual impairment, what does it mean, Charles syndrome, Usher syndrome, how the behaviors look like, what is the cause, is it progressive, what else I should be knowing that, is there any follow for treatment, is there any assistive devices, When it comes to assessment, how much my child can see? <clears throat> is it the upper field, lower field, right, left? All these things matters. And then how much is the visual field? How much I can see? And what are the educational and behavioral implications due to vision loss? What is the functional assessment data says? What is the learning media which my child is accessing the information? What is the learning media? It's like over, it can be visual, tactile, auditory, any which media my child is learning, learning style. From where this all this information you will be getting? So we'll be talking about IEP. So before that, everybody's you have your mobile phones with you, right? Okay. What is happening here? Selfie? Can we all take a selfie now? Everybody take your phone and then please take a selfie. <laughs> wow, this is cool. I hope our online friends will also be taking some selfies. <laughs> okay. Very simple assessment hack. Selfie assessment. What does it mean, the selfie assessment? So you all know about the CVA, right? So it's like a damage to the cortical visual impairment. So where we'll be taking the educators, one of the parameters is visual complexity or visual clutter. The child will be facing extreme difficulties to understand the, what exactly the child should be focusing to. So here comes the selfie assessment. Usually selfie refers to a self-portrait photograph. will be held at like arm's length or maybe used by a self-timer, or right now we can click by ourselves itself. So in this selfie, there is a speciality. Make sure that we'll be taking the selfie as per the child's eye level. And when you'll be taking a selfie, you will get to know our background. That is the child seeing, that is the child's view, where every educator have the camera eye to see the minute details in the background. Because we will be send, we'll be working with the child, we will be tend to look at child's background. The selfie assessment, it's a simple tool, will help you to understand what is in our, our background. So this is again developed by my, my 
friend and uh, and myself so it is very important for you to understand the iep and the components or modifications all the contents in the iep it is because it has been developed by a group of experts so we exploit them take their knowledge so in the new iep format uh, i think presented by the massachusetts present level of functioning and it has like assistive technology details parent concerns child's vision as a team and child itself can write and then student profile goals and objective service delivery grade it means like how many times of speech therapy the child will be available uh, availing or, or occupational therapy all the services adapted physical education so the transportation services it will be written over there then signing reviewing if there is any transition plans so in the handout i have again included a positive student profile checklist where that is a snapshot of the positive student profile that will give you a lot of empowerment when you present yourself in the iep meeting you will get to know what are the my child strength dreams challenges everything is mentioned beautifully in the checklist so the curricular modification when we say the national center on um, head start association they will be having all these domains they will be talking about it can be environment curriculum material as a special equipment a peer can be a support a child preferences will be will be taken account this also the simplifying the activity um, like managing the steps into a small chunking and then adult support invisible support in will be will be particularly selecting an activity where the teachable components will be carefully included so some of the examples you can see a large print and slant board the earlier um, session karen was beautifully explaining if the child has to have difficulty in looking down and then the slant board will be a um, modification material adaptation and then communication boards these all are will come under adaptations and modifications so moving to the next slide so perkins famous quote every child can learn and communicate yes so communication is the key not only for children with difficulties or challenges everybody communication is so so important so next slide i have taken dr albert mehrabi and some uh, communication schedule he is a famous uh, psychologist researching on communication and thing so they have uh, have a cycle where if you can see only 7 7 percentage importance for the words and 38 percentage your voice tone matters and 55 percentage of body language why i have taken that because our children because of their diverse needs majority will be falling into the the last two categories so usually we will be using total communication or multimodal communication where we'll be using objects partial objects photographs braille tactile sign language everything we'll be using gestures drawing writing speaking facial expression so as a parent i should be knowing what is my child's communication mode that will give me lot of empowerment when we when i'll be working with a child every behavior is a form of communication if you understand the communication pattern you will be very easily you can access to your child so we have anybody wanted to repeat like uh, what all the a we have covered first one is acceptance and second one assessment and third we have kind of talked about communication and the fourth is collaboration do you think collaboration is required of course <laughs> that's the that's the key we should be having a very cordial relationship with our educators the related service providers because they will be working their technically their sound knowledge and you know your child best so think about a beautiful integration of both the collaboration how beautiful it will be and then you will can have a networking with the parents 
So we all are working for a common goal. Using a collaborative teaming approach will give increased ownership. And then what all strategies you will be uh, implementing in school should be consistent back at home also. That will give you a lot of privilege. I will tell you in more in the next slide. And in the new IEP form, they will be asking one question. Do you need any training to parents? So please feel free to tell your educators to your uh, IEP team, I need training on certain aspects. And they are more than happy to help you because they know the related services and the resources available for particular challenge which you are facing back at home. And in the handout section, I have also included an assertive behavior inventory. Assertive behavior, you can tell your points without hurting anybody's feeling, but at the same time, you should be the advocate for your child. So think about a past IEP meeting or any meeting with your professionals, how well you might have communicated your thoughts and your suggestions or recommendations to your team. So that well you can monitor through the assertive behavior inventory. So in the circle, it has been written interpersonal behavior in which an individual actively communicates their personal interest without violating the rights of others. That is called assertive behavior. So moving to the next parameters, that is education. Education is a fundamental human right for every child. So there matters schedules and routines and consistency. In the first few years of life, the brain will be more accustomed with the consistency and repetitive predictable environment. Repetition and practice will give the child more independence. And as a parent, we should be providing a literacy-rich environment. So yeah, <laughs> there is actually a famous quote. I think it's covered by the. So before we talk about the literacy, literacy is the beginning of education. That's what the quote saying. So did you know about the reading rope? Yeah, <laughs> all right. So the why I have taken the reading rope here, this is Carbaro's reading rope. If you can see, he has used the two pipe cleaners to represent the complexity of the reading signs. Imagine if you see the lower stands and the uh, upper stand, language comprehension, background knowledge, vocabulary, language structures, verbal reasoning, literacy knowledge, everything matters along with the phonological awareness, decoding, sight word recognition. As an adult, maybe we will be having a repertoire of like 30 to 70,000 sight words. How complex it is. So imagine the kind of adaptation and the modification required for our children. The same, same happening with the writing readiness. Before moving to, even if it is uh, braille or anything, we need hand finger strength, crossing the midline, the correct pencil grip that is like the, we will call it as like standard tripod grasp, where you can see a web will be forming over here. This is the correct one, where you will be supported by the left hand, because many of the time in the schools, we'll be seeing that children will be writing with uh, one hand. They will be using only one of their hand. And one hand will be like, OK, you should be, both hands should be supported on the table. And one more thing you have to do, you should be always like slanting the paper. If it is you are a righty, you can slant it to your left. If you are a lefty, you can stand it, uh, slant it to your right. Yes, yeah, I have confusions in right and left. So this is the way you have to, yes. So the positioning matter, but what our children do, usually I've been seeing in schools, by writing, they will go along with the paper. They won't move the paper accordingly. So if the paper will be, you will be coming to the paper into the end, they will be going into the end. Without taking an effort to keep your hand on the table and paper should be modified. So can we do a very quick activity? So 
both the hands. Can you see the both the hands? Okay. Touch it. And then you can give a little pressure. All right. And then stretch it. Pull apart. Both the side. You can see if you um, look at our children's hands, many of them will be having difficulty in finger isolation. That's very, very difficult. They will be holding the pencil like this. So what we can do, one simple hack, one simple accommodation, take a small paper or a small pom-pom balls, keep it here, ask them to hold it. This is the way the child will be able to hold it properly. So that's the importance of modification, small accommodations. Moving to the next slide. The importance of stimulating home environment. That's your part as parents. We have very low, little control over that. It's the family-centered approach where family is the key and early intervention where relation, that is a relationship-based discipline and plenty of natural learning opportunities. It can be a meal time, bathing time, dressing time, everything, leisure time. And as a parent, I can, if the child is able to read the large print, I can print it out, laminate, just paste it on your wall so that the child will be having a literacy rich environment, exposure to literacy. Diverse opportunity, take them to the park, mall, wherever possible by you and exploration of various techniques, where you can learn the techniques from your IEP team, from your teachers. You have to give positive reinforcement. If you see the behaviors, we'll be using that alternative behaviors, no, the replacement behaviors, how well you can do that. Talk to your BCBA, talk to your uh, behavioral therapist, and promoting a balanced diet, including all the, make sure that many of the children will be having lot of dietary challenges and then make sure that maybe adequate once in a time you can have a consultation with your nutritionist. Adding the, we have learned about the importance of vocabulary, so adding to your child's language. You can place some mystery box in many places where uh, some, it can be a small thread, some, uh, some snapper wrapper, some kind of like some toys where the child will be feeling like, okay, then you can have a conversation, understanding the behavior. If there is any challenging behavior, again, talk to, get back to your therapist. Maintaining the consistency, that again will come back to the collaboration. What kind of strategies the teachers or educators are actually working on it in the school? The same consistency, make sure that should be done it at home also. Then you can see the improvement or the success, it's massive. You can also set up sensory areas. It can be a calming space where the child can relax, enjoy with a lot of sensory equipments, sensory things. And at the same time, you can have some active learning area also where the child can learn and move. Movement is learning. So not never encourage your, so never discourage your child to be like sit. I always like encourage if the child is comfortable like standing, sitting, whatever position you can you can encourage. So the access recipe, the majority, that is accessibility. If the child is accessible to the curriculum, if the child is not accessible to the materials, then the learning won't happen. So there comes the importance of calendar boxes, schedules, routines. Because right now we are in a much, much like calming state where we'll know that, okay, because much earlier itself, we got the agenda. We know what exactly happening. I choose these many sessions, and after the sessions, okay, I'm done with it. I can go home, and after the noon also. Right now, you'll be thinking that, okay, after the session, like I have to go, maybe mall or friend or anything. Everything will be like a very structured way you'll be calculating. The same way, when you give the consistency, the routines, and the predictable schedule, you can see that much calmness in the child. The child will be like more relaxed, more self-regulated. And always give the choices that will give us like advocacy. The child will be able to give some, select some choices. And 
many of the time like we'll be talking and uh, like we'll be talking and the child will be somewhere make sure that you'll be like pro uh, approaching the child maintain the adequate uh, height because that's also very important because most of the time the child won't be able to see our subtle uh, changes in our face what's happening and the assistive technology make sure that you should be giving some breaks if you plan some activities then it should be some visual activity, then something like non-visual activity so that we can avoid the visual fatigue. It is always better to have a time set at home and then where you'll be having a very quality time without gadgets. I'll be coming to that point. So assistive technology devices are defined as any item or piece of equipment or product system that is used to increase, maintain, or improve the functional capabilities of individuals with the disabilities. So major plan that is family media plan. What is it? Any idea? We'll be moving to the next slide. So I have a question. As per American Association of Pediatrics, children below two years of age, how much screen time is allowed? Zero, no. Maybe you can take five minutes like video call to grandpa. Hi, grandma. AP is not at all suggesting any screen time under the age of two years. Imagine if you think about maybe your neighbor or your like any relatives or your anybody, non person. They, Everybody, every child will be having a mobile phone nowadays or the gadgets. The screen time, the amount of time spending with any gadgets, it can be an iPhone or it can be any tablets. So the healthy balance between media. Here comes the role of a family or the caregivers, parents, mothers, setting as role models. If you see, like I will be using continuously on phone, then automatically my child will also be like having a tendency. At the same time, I'll be having a literacy rich experience where I'll be like reading and all. So majority of the time the child will be imitating us because they will be having some residual vision. They can see. So they will be seeing that, okay, mom or reading or something. So that will be having a positive reinforcement for the child. Choosing the good content, co-viewing, that's the word they have used. Co-viewing means you can pause, explain, add, elaborate the child's vocabulary. You can have a discussion, pause, and then again play it. Because it is only passively, any device that will be giving only passive stimulation, where the child will be getting unlimited visual stimulation. And child will be so happy. Why the YouTube shorts are very popular? Within very set time limit, like highly engaged content they will be keep on repeating so, so it can be some songs some lines some reels everything that's the speciality you know so some children will be having i could see that they will be addicted with uh, all these things so be very careful and intermittent digital fasting it's like a screen free zones maybe after this much time like at meal time nobody will be using the phones Something, some, maybe as per any family's choices you can plan. What is get light right? Get light right. There is a 10 10 rule. You should get some sunlight before 10 a.m. You should avoid blue light after 10 p.m. So here comes the blue light means. Blue light emits from all the gadgets. So that's a very simple hack, like, OK, so th that's the light, right? So get some sunlight before 10 AM, and then maximum avoid blue light after 10 PM. And you can plan a lot of screen time alternate activities. So many YouTube uh, videos, they will be very beautifully, they'll be explained explaining about the different activities can be an alternate can be painting drawing reading some sensory activities so something which you can plan with your as a family you can then make the child also like today in the keynote uh, address robin was saying that okay make the child also participate in the daily chores 
good to go for an emotion check in okay so anybody in number 5 after hearing my presentation anybody in 4 no good 3 2 1 4 thank we also like any time in our point of life there is many times we'll be going for a burnout stress anxious isolated so you should be having a trust person where you can have a open con conversation and acquire knowledge and skills knowledge will give you power power will give you action and action speaker louder than words Yes. And maintaining a consistency as a parent, it's very important not to be burned out. Then taking some time, meditation, mindfulness, doing things mindfully, exercise. <laughs> some of my colleagues are laughing because I'm not at all into exercise. <laughs> so that's it. There are a lot of oxytocin is released. so that is important for our happiness hormones become an advocate networking similar minded people sufficient sleep that's very important and gratitude compassion empathy see if you think about a cup filled with kindness lot of emotions and then positivity then only you can pour to others right from an empty cup you won't be able to pour that is your child the same way you should be filled with lot of positive emotions finally so we have done with the access so can we all repeat acceptance say along with me assessment communication yeah collaboration wow you remember e education and s stimulating environment and one more s is self care oh nobody is sleeping good <laughs> and the recipe the resources we need resources right because we do not know as a parent i'll be a, i'm a new parent or maybe i don't know like where to approach again get back to your team access to resources such as educational materials assistive devices support services is crucial for optimizing the child's learning experiences parents can advocate for and seek out relevant resources that address their child's specific needs enabling them to thrive academically and socially so i have taken only three resources in us we are for, so so fortunate about getting resources make use of it because many of the countries are not that much in a privilege so reach out to your team and they they can provide you with unlimited resources perkins i have included many of the sites in the reference section but i would like to talk about since it is inclusion lab app it's a mobile application for disability service coordinators and education managers and coaches it is designed to help you support education staff to provide highly individualized instruction for young children with disabilities or suspected delays why it is matter because we we wanted to know how well the teachers will be like uh, curating the customized program for our children with difficulties i have taken one uh, parent network in this parent there are beautiful videos are there it's a non profit organization that orients and empowers parents and others caring for children with uh, serious medical conditions by providing resources and tools that reflect the experience and perspective of other families and clinicians there is a chance for that networking so the next resource is the bebo it's specially designed for parents it's done by the unicef parenting app bebo helps parents provide their children with the best start possible 
with information about nutrition, play, and emotions. Bebo provides answers to the questions parents have on raising children. You can give child's age and all, and they will give you a beautiful checklist where you can monitor the developmental milestones. That's all. Yes, okay. Is there any chance we can play this video? Oh, is it possible to go to YouTube? Okay, fine. So we were talking about, okay, you can find it out. I'll, uh, the link is there in the slide, okay? So just watch it. It's very beautiful to see. So we've been describing the importance of stimulating home environment, the communication collaboration, the one, the, maybe the fox is acting as a peer buddy, the gift we were talking about, and what they will be doing, no? They'll be taking a small, this kind of um, forms, and they will be putting into the thorns of the hedgehog. That's very beautifully summarized in that video. So please watch it in the, uh, it is the slide, the link is available in the slide. So at the end of the day, the most overwhelming key to a child's success is the positive involvement of parents. So these are my references. You can reach out to me in my email ID. So right now I'm in US and then next month we'll be going back to India. <laughs> yes, so you can reach out to the first email ID that is my personal email ID. So it's a parent of Johanna. So Jinu, the parent, she's telling acceptance and inclusion starts at home within the family first. Thank you so much. Yeah.